What's good everyone, I'm Zayas, and today I'm here to review Saltiness. This is a comedy, slice of life, drama, sign-in manga written by Furuya Minoru. This manga went from 2012 to 2013, being published in Young Magazine, but it's only finished translating about five months ago here in English, and only started translating a few years ago. Minoru has been commercially successful with some of his earlier works, such as The Ping Pong Club, but on top of that, he's also been widely acclaimed critically with some of his later works such as Siguatera and Himizu. The number of people who cite him as an influence is really ridiculous. You have Hideo Kojima who worked on a number of video games, Matsumoto Taio who worked on Takamitsu Zamurai and the other ping pong, Inio Asano, the pun pun author, Hajime Isayama from Attack on Titan, as well as a reference in Chikano Toko by Yoko. And most of his success is pretty much owed to him switching from his comedic, gag, like slapstick sort of style, where he drew really ugly characters and sort of made fun of them a little bit, into this newer style that's really dark, really grim, paints like a really horrible world in Himizu and Sigwatera. Both of these series were about some loser who managed to somehow get this really hot girlfriend. Both of these series are actually my favorites by him. After so much success and so many people liking his series, you might think he'd try to stick with the style. But with saltiness, he actually throws it aside again and goes back to comedy. But instead of sticking with what got him popular in the first place, the gag style jokes, he does another change, making it the third time he's had a very drastic change in style, and goes for a different style of comedy with these really bizarre, odd situations that happen to be completely hilarious. It all starts with Takahiko, our protagonist, who embodies what this entire manga is about. He is super eccentric, odd, crazy, but he finds himself in even stranger situations and manages to attract as weird people as him and nothing in this manga will go as you expect it to go. There will be spoilers in the next little part, so if you want to go read it first, go read it and then come back. But he undergoes the most crazy circumstance, the funniest circumstances you can possibly imagine. He will close his eyes and kick the first person he sees in the balls because he wants to assert dominance. He'll find some guy who shits in cars for fun at night. He will get naked and do some gardening. He'll paint some guy with polka dot marker and call him Pimple Man. And there's so much more than just this. There's so much crazy hazy stuff that happens in this manga that's just absolutely hilarious, absolutely unexpected. He also undergoes these super weird trainings where he'll get like buried underground for like a week and if he if he loses he'll have to tongue kiss his grandpa so he'll stay there or something and these trainings are supposedly supposed to prepare him for the real world but I, I think I think it did not do a very good job as he's ill prepared for the real world and that's just what makes his manga so funny. A lot of stuff doesn't make like any sense at all. It's so unexpected so weird so zany like it's it's crazy fun it's really fun and sometimes right before or like right after these really like weird situations he'll say something that's like sort of insightful about his purpose or what he wants to do and although it's not like super deep like crazy the contrast between him being like a very reasonable and logical guy and then going out there and threatening to shove a giant rock in someone's anus is just hilarious the homeless dude with 70 percent body fat was one of the funniest characters in the series it was pretty unexpected that a literal just homeless dude who's an alcoholic could be this funny. And it seems like Minoru was unable to resist and he snuck in a loser character with a hot girlfriend just like his previous works. And I thought the, the relationship was a little wholesome but it was actually hilarious at the same time because this crazy dude just barges in and forces him to do all this. And I can't imagine how Minoru managed to draw all these like super strange situations and think of all these like wild things that are like pretty much unimaginable to me. It's literally impossible to predict the series of events that happens in this manga. And then you get moments where the protagonist has a little bit of backstory shown and explained to us but it's kind of like halfway there as there's moments of comedy mixed in with this there's emotional moments mixed in but it never really gets to that like really really like attachment level with the protagonist just because he is so weird and strange 
He does show that he's able to sympathize with others, such as the little guy that he was dealing with. And he also shows that he really cares about his sister, which humanizes him a little bit, but still, he's so strange, it's kind of hard to relate to this dude. At times, it feels like Minoru's trying to make these characters, like, multi-dimensional, not just comedy gay characters. They, they never get really too in-depth with the characters and their motives, so I don't mind that he tries to go down this path, but I don't think it really brought that much to the manga. I would even go as far to say that these moments did feel a little bit forced at times, and they were my favorite parts of the series but it wasn't really a big deal. The Mentalist has such a strange character design that even compared to the other characters in this series, he stands out <laughs> quite a bit. I don't know what inspired Minoru to make this character, but this character had some seriously funny moments from the moment he joined. He tries to hypnotize some dudes, and then he goes around, wants to dominate the world, but then decides to settle for making cheese instead, even though he's afraid of cows. And then we reach the peak of the series, when he decides to try to go out and talk to girls for the sake of his sister. <laughs> And this is, this is by far the funniest scene in the series to me, as you have this like poor innocent girl, well she's not that innocent, but she's innocent enough, and she walks in having no idea what to expect from this dude, comes out in a clown outfit, he's trying to scare her and stuff, and he goes in, his friends talking to him during this, this sort of first date, I guess you could call it, and there's just so much crazy stuff that goes down, it's just so funny. He's literally like tormenting this poor girl. He's asking if he can feel her breasts and then, and then when, when he takes a good look and she says all right. He says they're too small to be considered hits and this this you gotta experience this scene for yourself definitely go read this this scene and then there was the scene where you thought it was getting a little more serious with the mental health issues being brought up and she was just putting herself out there and and then right afterwards, this crazy dude would just makes this stupid joke. And the scene was also really funny. And you could say Minoru was trying to, again, get us to connect with the characters a little more and show us, you know, some of their problems. I don't even think this is what he's going for, as there was a lot more emphasis being placed on the joke itself than the build-up. Then we're introduced to another character who is not that crazy compared to the characters we've seen already, but he's still so super crazy. He says that if he doesn't talk to anybody smarter than him, then he'll be the smartest person in the world and this is flawless logic by, by, by a genius obviously the smartest guy in the world and near the ending Minoru tries to get more into the characters themselves and what they're gonna do and how they're gonna live life and he surprisingly writes a pretty happy ending which for Minoru is super uncommon I wouldn't say this ending is particularly bad I wouldn't say this ending carries the same level of greatness like the beginning of the series had the weird, over-the-top comedy really just did it for me, and the characters in the series really just didn't do it for me. We didn't really get too much into what they were about. We saw like a, one side of the characters and we saw a little bit about like their heritage, where they came from, a little bit, stuff like that. But it really didn't leave like a long lasting impact where I was like, wow, these characters are super memorable, like characters in Him Himizu or Sigwatera. I'd also like to note that there's a lot less comedy near the end, like the last 10 chapters. Well, there are jokes and there are some good jokes. It's just not as funny and as strange as the first 30 chapters. And to get into the artwork, a little bit. This is the best artwork Minoru has had so far. The lines are a little bit smaller and the backgrounds are extremely like open. They feel like vast, big, just spacious. The characters still had this really exaggerated like over-the-top expressions, especially when reacting to something, but the character designs were way more memorable. They were super detailed. There was even moments where stuff like cars were drawn with tons of detail and stuff just looked overall great in this manga. It felt very clean, minimalist, and it was a big shift from his darker, sort of more grim artwork from before. Also, Minoru always draws his girls very cute and he continues to do so again in this manga. There's tons of great girls in here and he sort of forgoes his tradition of drawing guys a little bit uglier and he decides to draw the guys actually not that bad looking, which I appreciated the characters were visually decent to look at, and I don't think it would have been as great if he, these characters were look like something out of Ping Pong Club. Overall, I thought the series was very good. I thought it was extremely funny, great artwork. The characters kind of lacked a little bit. I think if Minoru just tried not to make the characters seem as deep as he wanted to, he could have gone away with it, or if he managed to get it across successfully, the characters um, feelings, emotions, you know, made them more complex than they are now, I think he could have done a better job. 
The series is great. I'm feeling a strong 8 to a light 9. Thanks everyone for watching. Let me know what you want me to review next. If there's any suggestions, leave them in the comments. Thanks everyone.